Hello and welcome to this online decode video lesson. This lesson is a start in a series of lessons about programming and coding in general. So what does it take to create software and, and what is generally required of someone? And it's not intended to be about any specific implementation. By that I mean it's not necessarily for the web. It's not necessarily to make um, phone apps. It's not necessarily to make computer games. It's those ideas that will be fundamental to no matter what you do. And because of that, you can come back to this as a reference sort of at any time for any general concept about making software, the, the programming aspect. This is designed to be a pretty beginner level course just to get you started and just give you a little bit of a taste of what this wonderful, wonderful world of software can offer you. Now, it can often seem pretty daunting to how you would start to, to make software. You know, what does it take? What does it take to, to tell a computer what to do? You know, to give it a give it a task and then watch it complete that task and then other things start happening and, and, and what are those intricate steps involved in making those processes happen? And the truth is, is that programming a computer to do something isn't a whole lot of complicated stuff. It's actually a whole lot of simple stuff that when you put it together becomes one big complicated thing. So you can distill this all down into, into one simple thing well, into, well you can distill this down into into a series of simple things and it all boils down to one really important discovery and that discovery is that programming is just instructions to create software that in which computers do things that is just instructions that you give to the computer just give them a series of instructions and then software does something this can be in a computer game in, in an iPhone app um, in a website or any any sort of thing it really boils down to just listing instructions so let's come up with some sort of really simple example so say we have a robot and we want to give this robot a task by programming it by giving it instructions as we would a computer To do this, well, what, what, like, what, what instructions do we want to give this robot? Well, let's say there are these tokens that are just appearing randomly in this sort of random area in space that we've got reserved for this robot. And whenever one of these tokens appears, we want the robot to go to the token and then pick it up. And then we'll wait for another token and then we want to pick that one up. And that really boils, I've just listed off the instructions that we want you know, to, to program this robot. We would have to wait for a token to appear and then we would want the robot to travel to the token and then collect the token and then that's done. And then the next step to make it do it over and over again is you just have to give the instruction to do that particular series of instructions forever continuously so once you take the token you go back to the beginning and you start waiting for the token again and that way you can just cycle through the instructions really easily as a new token appears the robot goes and, and collects it and these are some really really simple instructions just to demonstrate the point if we had some sort of way of interfacing with a robot and communicating in these ways with these exact words in a, in a way that could understand that would be programming that would be programming the robot and you'd be uh, very vague software creator, software developer, which would be pretty, be pretty cool. But let's take a look at these instructions a little bit and let's get rid of that. Um, let's take a look at those instructions a little bit more. And these instructions are, as I said, really quite simple. But the, the thing about computers is that you have to give them these instructions in some form. And this form can be basically anything, but it's usually in something called what is a programming language. And that's where this whole concept of coding comes in. You type the instructions out in a, in a way that a computer can understand. And unfortunately, a computer can't understand plain English like 
we humans can or, or whatever language it is that you might speak. The way it communicates is through languages that, uh, that, that humans have created and those are very logical languages that have to take very logical steps and explanations. So instead of waiting for a token, we would have to say for, we, we have a sensor in the world. We have to, the sensor somehow sends a signal to the robot. And when the sensor sees a token, it'll tell the robot and then the robot knows to stop waiting. And instead of moving towards the token, we have to say, move the motors that are connected to the robots, for example, wheels in a certain direction, in a certain way to get to that token. And then to take the token, so the robot has some sort of arm that we have to then manipulate all the motors or whatever mechanism that is in the robot to then go and pick up that token and put it in, which is actually a very complicated process. And different interfaces with computers can give you different levels of complexity in that. Some ways can, can give you something as simple as wait for token, move towards token, take token, or you can get right down to it and get to that level where you are literally controlling the electrical signals that get given to the motors in the robot. And different programmers sit at different levels with that. And while we're talking about languages, let's just have a little bit of a note about syntax, which is this slightly more complicated thing that trips up a lot of people when they're first looking at computers. The, the point about syntax is that it's very, very precise most of the time. So while I could say, hello, my name, Christian, most people who could speak fluent English could, un could understand perfectly what I'm actually trying to say. I'm trying to say my name is Christian, but I missed a word out. Um, but computers can't infer that very well. And that stumbles up a lot of people. So when it comes to typing out code, you have to type it out exactly as it should be. So every capital letter in the right place, every symbol in the right place, every word spelt completely correctly otherwise most of the time you'll find the whole thing doesn't work. So you can sort of replace this concept of syntax with the concept of uh, grammar in, in the English language. Um, so you want to have, you want to speak a programming language with perfect grammar, perfect spelling, otherwise things might go south. With that being said, let's start writing some code. Now I've got this little uh, I've got this little sandbox ready to go to start writing some code and if you're watching this video anywhere on the internet you can watch it and learn from it but if you go to the decode website which will there'll be a link in, in around the video somewhere probably below it in some form of a description you'll be able to go to the decode website and actually code along with me so every change that I make you can make at the same time which is which will make it a lot easier so let's start typing some instructions to this computer now don't worry if you can't really follow along at first or if you don't fully understand what's going on, this is merely an example. So I can type something like this. And hey presto, and look this is pretty much plain English. What I've said here is I've said make this new rect, which is short for rectangle, give it a, some numbers that mean things, fill that rectangle with red, oops I've done something bad, and then add this rectangle to our stage, which is like a stage that you have with a theatre. And you can see right here that there's a red rectangle on our stage. And you can do that with all sorts of different, um, different shapes and different colors it's simple you just change things around let's change that to a hundred and that to a hundred and then we'll go circle dot fill blue circle dot add to stage now we've got another really really big circle let's get that circle out of the way by giving it some more instructions. Now look, the circle just moves out of the way. So we've got another instruction right here. This last one 
is saying animate and animate like digital animation is to move something and we can say move that something for one second and move this funky whatever this means move to x200 now this is all about coordinates and we're talking a little bit about drawing here so we might as well talk about coordinates and how computers sort of think about coordinates and that's what all these numbers are about they're, they're ways of saying where things are supposed to be and we're simply coding in pixel values and every pixel is sort of a tiny tiny little piece of this box here and what we do is we start from zero up the top zero zero in our coordinate system and we move to um, up to 400 in this x-axis and down to 400 in the y-axis so if I say make this rectangle 400 wide it will fill up the entire thing if I make it 400 tall it'll actually fill up the entire thing as opposed to just filling up the side of it and we can make it 400 tall and only say 50 wide and then we'll, we'll start we'll start seeing the effect of that so you can play around with these numbers and actually see how that affects where the rectangle appears and you can fiddle around with these numbers and see how it changes where the circle appears so we can change how big it is and we can change where it starts so we can say we want to start it a little lower down so we're going x y in the circles case it's radius x y in the rectangles case it's width then it's height now we've just sort of thrown you thrown you in the deep end here but that's okay we're just demonstrating some concepts to do with coding that's all it is just just some concepts around around drawing and these drawing methods are the best way to give the idea that all we're doing is we're giving the computer instructions we're making a rectangle filling it with red adding it to the stage and we're giving it a very precise syntax so you'll notice if you say get rid of this dot here it all breaks it doesn't work anymore we've got nothing in our output bring the dot back it works so syntax is important but we'll go over all of those different elements later on so as i said before head over to the deco website to code along with me if you're not there already hopefully this has been at least slightly insightful to the whole wacky world of programming and in our next lesson we'll actually start grilling down into different elements and, and exactly what they mean and, and how you get get over this idea of syntax and how to actually start writing a language as opposed to blindly fiddling around with numbers that I've, I've typed in. So until next time, uh, keep playing around with some code.